I cleaned up the rusty hub. It's been soaking in molasses for ages. Um, and I also put it in the blast cabinet and just sandblasted it. All the rust came off pretty easily. So you can see it's pretty pitted here and all the, the nuts for the studs have rusted away. So there's not even anything there I can actually get a socket on to get these off. So I'm going to have to grind these off, cut them off. Um, this is pretty pitted. It seems to be straight though. And the surfaces where the bearings fit are actually still smooth. It's just the outside. So maybe this will be okay to reuse. I mean, it's solid enough. It's not going to go anywhere. Um... So I'm going to remove these, Let's see if it's got the, the writing on it. I think that's where it looks like an R. Because these are handed, they're actually labeled. You can see NSLH, so near side left hand. This should be the opposite. Um, I'll pull the studs out and see what it looks like. I've cleaned up the the pitted hub. I use the angle grinder to cut a split down the end of the studs and then the cold chisel just to um, split the nuts off. So they all came out pretty easily and then I just wire brushed this up. It is very very pitted. Um, it is still flat and the bearing still push into it nicely because that surface inside there is is okay but you can see here where this is pitted so the way this works is this is the outer bearing that drops down inside there this one is a little bit loose but once it seats in there there's no wobble and a little bit of uh, Loctite bearing retainer on that would hold that in get it out yeah it's in there now um, the outer bearing goes in there that looks like it has to be sort of pressed in it's gonna be a tight fit uh, I did think that these were both sealed bearings but it turns out they're not so the front one's a sealed one the rear one isn't which means this will have to be packed with grease and this will need to be to seal on the back and the way that usually works is you can see where it's where it's worn in the star shape pattern because you have these retainers so there's a gasket goes on there and then this plate bolts on the back there and I believe there's usually a leather gasket that goes in here I think I have those somewhere um, that seals the back of it. So this padding looks bad, but if it's only cosmetic, I could just sort of fill all this with, with modern epoxy, sand it flat so it's smooth, so it'll look okay. Um, and I think that might be usable. I don't think there's enough pitting in it to, to have weakened it too much. Um, yeah, I'll have to have a think about that. And see but with it all clamped together it's quite a solid unit so I don't see that anything could go wrong with this really um, and then of course it gets um, all bolted up together with the brake drum so everything gets all squashed together so I may actually be able to use these these bigger hubs uh, it's definitely not weakened around where the stud holes are uh, so you can sort of see where there were bits attached to it, it hasn't rusted. Yep, there goes the bearing. So if it's just a matter of making this look pretty and it's going to be fine to use, then, then I can use that bigger one. Um, yeah, it's something else to think about. And I think there are... I'm not sure what goes on the end of the hubs, if there's some sort of cap. Um, I think the cap goes in the end of the wheel, actually. There are sort of little 
dust cover things, brass caps, which I do have somewhere, I'm not sure what condition they're in. Um, and then of course there's the, the big nut. So that goes, that'll be sitting in there. Um, I need to look in the parts books, which I got there, just to see if there are uh, any washes or anything. Actually, I'm just trying to figure out how all this must go together. You must have to put this bearing on here first. Of course, you've got the backing plates on here normally, because that nut then has to go on. So that nut goes on there. I'm assuming there's a split pin hole somewhere. Yeah, there's a hole, a hole there for a pin. So that'll retain that bearing. And then you must have to push the hub onto there. I'm really not sure how this is going to work. Because that has to go on the back. So these holes are threaded. And these look like they're countersunk. Or counterboard rather. So I'm assuming there are bolts that go in here. This goes in there like that. So that seal is running on that lip. That sort of washer, leather washer. Uh, and then that way, of course. Something like that. I'm sure it all makes sense at some point. Okay, I think I've got this figured out how it all goes together now. These are the brake back plates, and they bolt onto the stub axles. And I'm pretty sure these are the special bolts you have to use. Um, which goes through there to hold that back plate on. Um, they have to be quite low profile, I guess, because next you have the, the backing plate. And the way this works is these are the leather washers that effectively seals around here to stop the grease coming out. That goes on there like that. Then there's this little locking cover plate. And there are, these are 2BA countersunk screws that go through there. I'm gonna to have to cut these shorter. That screws all that onto there. And then I think what you need to do is push this whole thing as an assembly then goes on there like that um, and you've got your gasket and the main bearing goes on and seats on that the nut goes on to tighten that up with the split pin hole and then I think you would put the the little bearing in place um, the shaft where it's been banged up on the end is just going to need a little bit of dressing just so that that'll be a nice push fit on there and then I believe you push the hub on to that and uh, 5 16th BSF bolts go through there little short ones which I don't have so I'm gonna have to get some of those go through the hub through here and screw into that oops if you can see and that sort of screws in there Um, so obviously these need to be short enough that they don't go all the way through and touch the, the brake back plate. Um, I believe that's how it all goes, goes together.
the unfortunate thing is the parts books don't tend to show you all the little um, sundry nuts and bolts and fasteners and things you need. So you kind of have to look at it and figure out, well, how's that going to work? What do I need to make that work? And then I remembered there's a dust cap that goes into the end of the, the hubs like that. They get sort of tapped home. Um, and I can't remember if these were originally greased or oiled. A lot of things on these old cars, they seem to use oil back in the day, heavy oil. But I think these days, the modern grease, uh, grease high pressure greases you can get are, are much better. And so I think these will just be packed with modern sort of bearing grease and that, that should work fine. But um, pretty sure that's how it goes. I, I, I think I've got these back plates around the right way because these are handed. So the brake cam goes through there. And this little hole is where the bolt goes through that the the return spring attaches to. So the return spring sort of goes on the back of this, the other side of this, from here to here. And that's what pulls off the um, the um, the cam. And, of course, the brake shoes go in here as well. I think I'm missing the lower pivot bolts for the brake shoes, so I may need to get those. Um, and obviously you can get to all the brakes... Well, hopefully you can get to all the brakes with the, the hub in place there. Um, and then of course you've got the studs coming through the, the hub. I haven't pushed those in yet because I haven't decided which hubs I'm using. And then the brake drum goes on top of that. So it all kind of makes sense once you sit down and look at it. I've been thinking through what's going on with my crank and actually measured a few things and looked at it properly with decent light and stuff like that and I think I know what I have to do now so I was worried if this bush was in the right place but it occurred to me well it was set up for the original crank before and it would have been set properly then by whoever built the engine in the first place and the distance on these cranks is going to be the same, even though it's a modern crank, that measurement shouldn't be changing. So I'm looking more carefully at the gap here and the gap here. And the reason there's actually a gap in there is because of that, that radius on the inside of the web there. And I think what's happened is when I had this line board, this was originally set up for the, the original crank, but the original crank was ground undersize. So the white metal bearings were a smaller diameter to fit the undersized crank. When I had the machining work done, this was just line board out, and there was enough material there that he didn't actually have to re-metal them, I think. So what's happened is this has been line board out for the new, bigger crank, and that has removed whatever... Um, chamfer was on the edge of that bush and what's happening is because of the lack of that clearance in there on that corner and the fact that this crank has a, a deeper radius there a bigger radius means this end of the crank isn't going fully into that bush it's, it's riding up on the inside corner so all I need to do is put the the chamfer on there so I got out my feeler gauges and I've been trying to measure this a lot more accurately and it looks like if I take up get this so that this actually pushes up against that bush more or less or, or can push up against it um, this will then go fully home and it works out there's about 30 thou of clearance I think in here there should be um, I've also I was reminded on the forum actually how the inflow is actually set and it's all done at the front here so what we have well, these are all the things that go on the front of the crankshaft including this big thrust washer so the way this will work is this goes on there and then this gear 
which is keyed to the shaft, goes on there. I don't want to, I don't want to push it on because it'll be hard to get it off. And then you've got this big nut, which goes to clamp everything up. And this also drives the uh, dynamo, I guess. So that'll go on there. Um, I may have to machine this to clear the intermediate gear. I can't remember. That, that'll one bit at a time. So first I need to get all this done and then I can work out how the rest of it works. I did mock it up beforehand. I just can't remember. But the thing that's going to set the end float is the thickness of this. This washer. So that is what sets the crank end float. And the movement here. Um, I've also just, it's not keyed on or it's not bolted on, I've just pushed the flywheel onto the taper uh, just to see how that looks and it's 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 clearing everything so I don't know exactly where that needs to fit. Um, hopefully it's correct, it should be, it, it, it's all been machined correctly so that the flywheel fits at the same place on this crankshaft as on, as on the old one. So I think all I need to do to fix this is chamfer the inside of that bush. Um, I'm just not sure how to do that at the moment. Um, somebody suggested a bearing scraper, but I've never actually used one of those, so uh, I'll have to consider. The other thing I did is I was looking through my boxes of bits again, and I found I actually have the original um, brake backing plate bolts, these special bolts, and these fit a lot better. You can see how they go in there, you can actually see the little indent where the head fits, and that goes up against there to stop those turning. So these will be the ones I use. Uh, for some reason I've got more than a complete set, I've got about 15 of them when you only really need 8. Um, I've also, I've just, just with some emery paper, cleaned up where the bearings seat and um, there was a little bit of a lip in here where the original leather seal ran so I've, I've put some um, epoxy in there and I'll sand that smooth just so it has a smooth surface to run on. I was actually looking up these bearings because it may be worth trying to figure out if you can get a sealed version. Um, I have seen them but I think they were sort of budget bearings so I'm not sure if they're good enough quality. But interestingly, this is a uh, 6406 bearing, and they're metric, which is kind of weird um, for a pre-war vintage car. Apparently they used metric bearings. So luckily these aren't hard to get hold of. Um, and I've just been painting up various bits and pieces, brake pulleys, the, um, the little brake cams, and I just realized I need to... I might as well do these um, these hub cover plates as well. The hub, I'd, I'm pretty sure this is going to be fine to use. The, the pitting wasn't too bad. It looked a lot worse than it was. I, again, I tried to sort of measure how deep it was, um, which isn't easy. All I could really do was put a, a straight edge across it and, and see how much of a gap there was in some of the low spots. But it's barely anything. So I've basically slathered this in JB Weld um, epoxy and hopefully that's just going to fill up all the pitting. I just want to make it look smooth so I can paint it nicely. Um, it, it's not gluing anything together and I don't need a huge amount of strength or anything. It's a bit like body filler on a, on a car. It's just to smooth it out. But I have successfully used this stuff on my um, drill press here where because this is a rotating head in the past somebody's uh, people have obviously drilled too far so there was a row of holes all the way through here um, so I just filled those with a bit of that JB weld and it, it holds up pretty well um, it's been holding up on here pretty well for a long time so I think that'll work and then that sorts out the hubs. Obviously this one 
needs painting. Um, this will also need painting. I'm just going to clear clear the epoxy out of out of the holes, of course. Then I can paint those up. Actually, put the front hubs on it. Uh, the other thing I haven't mentioned in the last little bit was the wheels. So I decided the best way to fix that was to make this garrote thing. Um, and I used that. I've sat the wheels flat on the ground and I was able to loop that behind the spokes and, and just give them a little tweak. And it turns out most of them weren't really that bent. So they're all straight again now. The, um, the wheel builder chap is going to send me up some of the paint. So I should be able to touch up where the, the paint's been damaged, hopefully. I'll rub it back a little bit and then touch it up with a really fine, high quality brush. And they should be good. I, I think they'll be okay. So I think that's all the little bits and pieces. I'm going to look into the best way to sort out the inside edge of that, that bearing now.